so we stick to, although we start a little bit late, uh, it's, uh, lunch break is very tightly uh, planned. Um, we'll keep to the uh, allocated uh, presentations times. Uh, so we have uh, two full papers, that's uh, 30 minutes each with a 10-minute discussion for each. And um, we have uh, one short paper, which is uh, uh, 15 and 5. Um, and um, my name is Peter Ryman. I'm, I'll be chairing this session uh, this afternoon. And I think we should start. I'll leave it to the uh, speakers uh, to offer if you want to accept questions during the, your talk or you say, you know, do it, uh, keep it up to the, to the dis for the discussion. In general, I would think if you have immediate questions that really uh, you need to help your understanding of the ongoing presentation, raise your hand immediately. And uh, anything else, we... we uh, we keep to the discussion section. Okay, well, Carlos uh, um, will be talking on what, uh, no, the wrong, wrong day. Sorry for that. It's Wednesday today. Here we are. So Carlos, uh, supporting teachers, STEM scopes, contextualizing learning analytics in a K-12 science uh, curriculum. Go ahead. Okay. So um, I, uh, I'm with a group at Rice University in Houston, Texas, and um, today I will talk about the work we are doing uh, with uh, learning analytics in the context of a curric science curriculum for kindergarten to high school, uh, which is kind of different of what we, are, uh, we have heard so far, which is mostly in higher education. Uh, nonetheless, there are some uh, methods and uh, practices that we can uh, incorporate in our work and hopefully some of the work that we are doing can be also shared with other uh, groups. And these are the uh, other colleagues working in this, uh, in this project. So I will walk through to uh, the motivation, what, uh, what is the reason that we are incorporating learning analytics into the curriculum, the architecture that we adopted that allows us to uh, curate the data, store it and curate the data that we are uh, generating, uh, what is the pedagogical framework that supports this curriculum? The, who the stakeholders are? And this is important because that's the kind of questions we are trying to address with the learning analytics uh, uh, that we are adopting. Some of the methodology. Uh, I will show some examples of how we are starting to address these questions uh, using visualizations. And finally, some uh, future work, some of the challenges we are facing and future work. So. That data is important, so I think we, we know that. Um, but we believe, especially in the K-12, uh, that people is way more important. Uh, one of the reasons is that when we talk about learning analytics, there is the assumption that there is a one-to-one -one computer. So the learner has a computer that access for uh, using materials. But this is not necessarily true in K-12 education. And I think that that uh, should be taken into consideration when we are um, looking at analytics. And but we have to use this data, and we need this data to impact people, uh, primarily teachers and, uh, and students, uh, for the improvement of uh, learning and teaching. The other reason is that uh, science, in general, is a very challenging topic uh, to teach, and in K-12 is also uh, very challenging. I will show some examples of what I mean by this. So this is a screenshot of uh, the curriculum. It's an online, so teachers can uh, use it and it's divided in different uh, science topics. So they can plan their lessons and they use the, the curriculum. It's aligned with the standards uh, designed by the, by the state. Uh, in the US, the, it's different the standards that each state has. So these are aligned to the Texas standards. It's not only an online curriculum, it's a blended learning environment. So what you see at the bottom um, are a couple of uh, videos that explain uh, to do some experiments with hands-on kids for explaining refractions, and that's what the teachers will use with the, with the students. And the reason why the, the curriculum started, so a few years ago, uh, RISE will bring, during the summer, uh, teachers for professional development during the summer, and there were two of the facilitators, one was a principal, the other was a, a science teacher, so they created an online uh, collection of resources that they were using with these teachers during the professional development. So it turns out that when the teachers were going back to the schools, they were using these materials for teaching uh, the, the students. 
So that's how they decided, and this was at a time when Texas decided to give money to the school districts to instead of buying or paying for printed textbooks, they could uh, use uh, digital resources. On the other hand, we um, collaborated with Rice faculty to evaluate the content, so make sure that the content, uh, the content of the science uh, was sound. So that's how uh, it started. But data, we are serving about 1.5 million uh, uh, students. And uh, this not necessarily means that students that are accessing the, the computer system. But we generate about 1.5 million events uh, per week. This is uh, students or teachers clicking on, 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 on content. About uh, 150 assessments are completed every week, uh, um, roughly 1.2 million questions and answers. So that's kind of the, the data that we are generating. Um, so the first challenging that we had is, well, this is a live environment. So it's not a data set that we have a store somewhere that then we use for, for research. Uh, is live. So this data is constantly generated. So the first challenge was, so how can we ensure that uh, scalability and security for data sets also because it's uh, student data? So this is a, a screenshot of <clears throat> our architecture. So number one is basically the interface. So when uh, teachers or students use our curriculum. Number two is uh, one server that holds all data for um, accounts information, passwords, uh, content information. Number three is events. They go to a different server. Uh, number four is every, every day a process harvests all this data, move to a different, uh, a different environment where all the data is being processed and crunched. So this is uh, number three is where all the processing takes place. When the process is completed, is moved to number five, which is another server, which is all the post-process data. And that's where when the administrators or teachers go and look at the analytics, that's where this data comes from. Now, we are start facing some um, problems with, uh, with the size of a data set. And we are starting to do some experimentation with, uh, with a Hadoop environment for uh, doing a distributed uh, processing for our, for our data sets. And I will as I start talking about like longitudinal studies, why this is, a, uh, is becoming an issue for us. All right. So kind of present and future impact of our curriculum. So here is we are serving, as I, as I said, 1.5 million students, mostly in Texas. And that's, as I mentioned before, because of the standards for the, for the state. But we have one school in North Carolina, one in Honduras, in Central America. Roughly 50,000 teachers use the curriculum. And we have about 40% of market share in, in Texas. So it's, it's really huge. Um, the second competitor. Um, it's 20, I think 18 or 19 percent of the market. So we are very successful. But we are moving into, we are aligning our content for the next generation science standards that 26 states, those are the ones that you see in blue, are um, signing up for 2014. So we are preparing our, our, our curriculum for that. And this is kind of like an estimation we expect, given the current trends, we expect like about 10 million students, maybe 300,000 teachers, and market share well, we expect 40%, maybe uh, a third of the market um, in, by next year. So briefly about the, the curriculum. So this is a screenshot of what the teachers see. It's based on the 5E pedagogical model. Um, this is a con con based on constructive uh, theory. But the idea is that you scaffold learning, the students learning by following these steps. So engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. And as you see, they match each one of the, the, those sections that you see on the, um, on the screenshot. And within that, you have different elements or activities that the, that the teachers use. So this is the, the curriculum. Um, in addition to that, we added two other components, uh, intervention and acceleration. So intervention is for um, helping students that are struggling with certain content or certain skills. And um, acceleration is provides resources for students that can be challenged with more uh, difficult things. Uh, this is important for, for analytics for two reasons. The first one is we're starting looking into how teachers are using the curriculum. Are they really following this 5E model or because they have the freedom of, of choosing different paths? And whether that actually correlates with, uh, with outcomes. The second is for intervention and acceleration is to identify the students that need intervention and what level of intervention and this similar thing for acceleration. Now, these are, this is a list of the different stakeholders 
uh, that we are the questions that we are addressing, each one has its own questions, uh, goals, and settings or environments in which they uh, use the, the materials or in which they will use the analytics. But the ones in blue is the, are the ones that we are currently um, serving, so students, teachers, administrators. Uh, we have also coaches, so some districts have uh, coaches that uh, train the teachers. For, uh, in our group for curriculum uh, design, uh, in the opening uh, talk this morning, uh, the speaker talked about the curriculum design and we are using analytics for improving the uh, curriculum design and for a research group. So those are the, the, the main ones. But we want to, in the near future, use this data also for policymakers. So how to inform them of how effective or ineffective certain things are in uh, teaching science and therefore ways in which resources can be better allocated. So that's a new group. And also parents. We want also parents to be involved in the education of the kids and we need to uh, address their needs also. So what is the methodology that we are, uh, um, the, our approach? So it's quantitative and qualitative. So quantitative statistics, we do correlations and some of the studies we have uh, conducted, so sure correlations, we start doing some modeling of the both content and users, user profiles, uh, clustering, classification. So that's quantitative, yes. Uh, but numbers are not enough. Uh, we need to contextualize, make sense of the, the interpretation of the data. It's extremely important. So we also have qualitative um, methods. So we conduct surveys, we do interviews, we have, we have focus groups with, with teachers, and we also do class observations. We film the class because we want to understand how the curriculum is really actually implemented at use in the classroom. And we have, for example, in, in one, one instance, um, a, a teacher that when we were looking at the analytics, the use in terms of clicks to the curriculum was low, but it's because she has only one uh, computer in the classroom. But on the other hand, she was actually using the curriculum extensively throughout the day using a projector. So this is the, the reason why it's important for analytics to be contextualized. Um, when we start getting into data, we also need to see what are the levels in which we are looking at, how we are slicing uh, data, because that has different, uh, different meanings. So in this, the one at the top is one study we did uh, for teachers. We compared teachers in one district, and we were looking at the variability of uh, the time they were uh, using, the, the number of days they were using the, the curriculum versus how much days from the beginning to the end uh, in which they use the curriculum. But that's at the, at the, uh, at the teacher level. Here we have, uh, we compare multiple districts. So we aggregate data by, uh, by, by schools in a district for teachers. But we, what we start seeing is that some of the data we had some outliers and we started trying to find what is the reason for it, what is the reason for those? Um, and what are the factors that we need to consider when we uh, make these interpretations? So for instance, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, time span. I may have a teacher that has a uh, high use of, um, of the of curriculum, but she uses from the beginning to the end of the semester. I have another one that has lower, but it's because uh, that teacher used for just one, one topic, one science topic. Uh, maybe it's because that teacher uses a different uh, resource for teaching uh, that topic. But that's also something that we need to, con to consider. So the time, uh, time span, number of days in which they uh, use it. Some teachers might teach multi uh, more than one grade. So that will also uh, increase the, the clicks of visits. Number of topics covered. So we are starting to look into what are the factors that we need to consider when we start slicing the, the data. So this is a production environment, as I mentioned before. This is a screenshot of what the, uh, at the district level, what they will see. So this is a, on each row corresponds to one science topic. The top are third grade, the bottom ones are for fourth grade. And each column starting from where you see the, um, uh, the red arrow, they match one of the five e steps. So immediately with this, they can, they can see Number one, what topics are uh, most used, which ones, uh, and what steps within each top topic are, are used. Um, and they can, they for example, uh, one of the, in one district, they wanted to train the teachers in one grade for which they found that there was not uh, that much, much use. But this is for the level of administrators, how they will use analytics. 
Um, one idea that I just uh, thought this morning after the talk is uh, that we were discussing earlier in our group is to also include here not only at the topic level, but also at the skills level. What are the competences, the skills levels that are being taught uh, in each one of these, um, of these uh, science topics in order to enrich the type of analysis? Another example was using analytics to uncover un uncommon patterns. So the way this is a, a, a table that depicts uh, students on the rows and each column corresponds to three tests. So for each unit, students do one test at the beginning of the unit, they do a second test midway and one at the end. And this is in a period of about one week. The, the teacher assigns the, the assignments at the beginning, all three of them. And students should complete them in that order. And that's kind of what we see, everything that is in blue means that they did the pre-assessment, progress monitor, and the final assessment in that order, which is the correct order. The ones at the bottom are students that did in different order. So they completed one that was supposed to be completed afterwards. So one um, lesson learned from this is that, that we didn't consider in, in terms of designing the curriculum was to ensure that they, the students complete the assignments in the, in the correct order. But that's a, uh, one example of using analytics for uncovering the uncommon patterns. This is a screenshot of a, we call it a mastery report that the teachers uh, will see. Uh, we are launching this at the beginning of May. But basically, what we see here is in each, call, in each row corresponds to student, students. This is one class. Uh, the columns match one of the science topics. The arrows indicate how that student is progressing in that topic, whether from the previous test. So it's uh, improving, or it's not improving. Um, and the last column is a mastery report. Basically, it's, a, um, it's, a, it's an average. For the time being, we are using average. But that, uh, along with the, the, the um, box at the top, the one that says dynamic mastery level. So teachers can change that, uh, that threshold. So they can see, for example, how the classroom, uh, how, how they master concepts depending on different thresholds. And we are using that for coloring the cells on the, on the, on the students. And that match response to intervention. So at the beginning of the talk, I mentioned the, in, the intervention and acceleration. So this is what they will use to see what resources from the curriculum should be used for different uh, students, depending on the intervention uh, they need. Now, in terms of computing this, so all this data has to be computed uh, pretty much in real time, because students might probably be completing assessment as, as I'm speaking. So for, at, at this point, we have uh, on a on an hour basis uh, processing, but we will have a, a real-time processing for all that data. But it also has implications for the way in which uh, our architecture is being designed due to the large uh, scale of a data set on the one hand, and also because we want eventually to include data from previous years uh, for this, uh, this type of report. A second group that we are addressing is a curriculum design. And so basically what I'm uh, displaying here is all the different elements for one science unit. This is metamorphosis. So this is what you see here listed. And the different columns correspond to the five E steps. So I was talking to one of the designers and she was um, saying, well, what the expectations were. So I'm showing here the, the last two, which uh, correspond to that uh, purple arrow. She was expecting those two elements to be used uh, almost at the same rate, and that's what we that's what we found. So that was good. The one, the other purple one, uh, it's a books on topic. She thought that probably wasn't they were not very much used, and that was exactly what this uh, show so confirmed something that uh, she believed, and they are thinking about removing them and probably using something different. But in terms of, of analytics, we can also uh, think that those elements, because they fit into the same uh, five step, they may probably be competing against each other. So that will be another way in which we can use analytics to improve the curriculum uh, design. The, the 
red arrows just above that uh, purple. Uh, that's for interactive virtual investigations and math connections. The first are games. Um, she prefers not the games, but the other ones. But what we, the analytics show is the other way around. So one way is, well, how can we use this data for um, maybe improving the, the, the type of the materials or maybe training teachers? We can see what, who are the teachers that are using and the teachers that are not using certain elements. So we will probably create more uh, targeted professional development for teachers. Um, and the last one at the top is a video that uh, shows teachers how to use uh, uh, hands-on experiment and was not very much used. And that was kind of disappointing for her because she expected teachers to use that uh, for you know, uh, creating the, the experiments in the classroom. Um, so I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go through this. We are also looking into time-based visualizations. So the one at the top is a, um, a, a, a screenshot of how the topics that are being covered by a teacher change over time. So you see that mostly on the left, everything is about density, density, density. And then you start, see, start seeing circuits and electricity and um, adaptations. So we want to use this to map how teachers change over time the topics they are covering. The one at the bottom is, um, is the bars um, corresponds to the duration from the first time the teachers um, access the curriculum and the last time they log in. And so we see, you know, kind of like the duration in which they use uh, materials. So we start, and they are sorted from the high users to the low users at the bottom. So we, we, we want to um, account for this is one of the variables that we can to we want to incorporate in, in our analysis. Um, Another question for, in terms of the, of the curriculum, uh, and I'm gonna finish really quick, is to look at different patterns. So here what I'm showing on the first part of the, of the, of the graph is the intensity in which the teachers use the five steps in order, and whether they complete all seven, six, five, three, four, two, and one. On the other side are the ones that complete either seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, but in any order. And you immediately have the sense that that's what, the, what is taking place here. So we want to explore this in more detail and see how can we validate the pedagogical model. So some of the uh, limitations in an analytics, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, access to technology. So we don't have, uh, schools don't necessarily have a computer for each uh, student. So that limits the, the, the type of uh, data that we can uh, collect. Uh, data integration, so we, we have sometimes uh, uh, demographic data from the school district that are in different systems, uh, systems from other uh, learning management systems, so that's also a, uh, a challenge. The, the size of our data set, as I mentioned before, how to normalize data, how to account for what I mentioned about the size of the, the class, the size of the school, and so on, and how to also account for, especially in science, that the real experiments that the, the kids, the, the, the students do in the classroom that are not necessarily captured by the computer. Uh, so in future work, and with this I conclude, uh, as I mentioned, we want to start doing some domain and user modeling, try to see what, what are the different patterns that, they, uh, that we find. Uh, this is the first year, the analytics, we started in summer of last year, so we are finishing the first year. But uh, for the next year, we want to start doing longitudinal studies, so how they are progressing from year uh, to year. Um, we are uh, collaborating with the uh, people in electrical engineering and some personalized learning. Uh, the, we want to validate the uh, pedagogical framework. And because of this, the size and the scale of the data, we also are interested in some uh, sampling techniques, so that we don't necessarily have to do the, the analysis on the entire data set, but we can sample uh, the, the data set. This is a, just a screenshot of uh, something that we have um, for uh, this fall to launch for the teachers, so how they can see how their classroom are uh, progressing and how that compared to a student for the class, for the school, or at the district level. So this is um, something that we are planning on launching in uh, the fall. And finally, this is the team uh, that make this possible, and I'm really thankful for all their work.
Where this project is heading in three years from now? Um, one, I think, is the the way in which we can enrich the K-12 education. Um, and I think, given given the fact that uh, the lack of one-on-one -on -one access to computers, maybe the way that I'm seeing that we can approach is on the teaching side. So, for example. Uh, creating instead of personalized learning system for the students, like a personalized teaching, uh, professional development for the teachers. So we, if we identified what, are the, what the teachers are struggling with or if, if, if we find out what, what those reasons are, then we can improve uh, teaching, which it's, it's, a, it's a major factor uh, in education and K-12. So that's, those are the two, the two main ones. Um, and the third one is on the um, on the, the new ways in which we can uh, model both skills, competences, so we have a, like a more low uh, level degree of granularity in the type of, of, the, of modeling that we, that we can do. Those are the three that I see. Sure. The, what, they, what they have is, I don't think it's a consolidation, but what they did is that they evaluated a set of uh, curricula, and I think it's like 12 or 15, and um, they give uh, the freedom to the schools, the schools or the school districts to choose among those 12. Um, so that's how, I know RISE has, and our group, the, the Center for Digital Learning and Scholarship, we have another project, it's called um, Connections and Open Stacks. And those are like for free uh, open source and both textbooks and um, and materials for 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 teaching, but I, I don't I don't I don't know whether this, at the state level they have that. the typical um, decisions are that teachers have to make in the um, 5E curriculum and how the, um, I guess, the teacher dashboard that you've shown us uh, would be the, how that's uh, intended or supposed to support teachers in their decision making. Sure, so the first one, there are different factors. One is um, class, uh, the period time. So if there's an activity that might probably uh, take longer, they might probably not use it. So they will prefer uh, uh, an activity that takes mm, less than 45 minutes that I think is the typical class uh, period. Um, could be also um, if there are some games that require certain uh, uh, features on computers and they don't have that, then probably that's another reason why they will not use that. And another one is uh, teachers have the freedom of choosing other resources. So they might, some of them might probably find something that they are used to, be, they have been using for uh, some time, and they feel more comfortable about that. Um, so that would be uh, another reason. Um, the way in which we want to, when we did the focus group for, uh, and teachers are very much involved in our design. So they, we, uh, last summer we had a focus group with a, a group of teachers, science teachers, and they were the ones who expressed interest in, in, the, for, in the dashboard. They wanted to see um, what part of the curriculum were not, um, were not, they were not using so that they can serve as a reminder for them. That was one thing. Um, the other that they, was very interesting is that they wanted to also have a, an environment for uh, sharing experiences with other teachers so that if they find a problem, um, for example, with one element, they can say well, how they overcame, overcome that, um, that issue in their classroom. So we see also that uh, community uh, collaboration in sharing experiences as a way in which we can enrich the, the, the dashboard for teachers.